traveling at great speed, will blast a huge hole upon impact and at the same time almost completely disintegrate. The mysteries of Tunguska and Meteor Crater were solved. It came from over there, from that direction. We look up in the sky and we see a brilliant fireball that's being made by the asteroid or meteorite as it's coming in and it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Gene's explanation of Meteor Crater was controversial, but the reason he studied craters in the first place seemed downright crazy. When he was 20 years old, more than a decade before the space program, Gene had a hunch America would soon go to the moon. And why would you go to the moon? To study the moon. And who do you send to study the moon? You send a geologist, right? I was going to do whatever I could do to stand at the head of the line when the time came to be the geologist chosen to go to the moon. Can you imagine any greater adventure? I couldn't. I thought, well, I better learn something about craters. <laughs> oh, Gene, that's great. Uh, I'm, oh, look at that. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Gene dared confide his dream only to one person. This was uh, 1951. When we first met, I just thought uh, she was the neatest gal I had ever met. That's it. <laughs> his wife, Carolyn, would become his lifelong accomplice in dreaming and scheming. What attracted me to you? What's that? I think it's your enthusiasm about things. Gets this big smile and and you know he's just full of joy and enthusiasm for what he's talking about. Gene has a way of getting what he wants. <laughs> we choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. In the early 60s, it seemed Gene might actually get what he wanted most. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy. America but was going to the moon, and he was already an expert on craters. There were many thousands of them on the near side of the moon alone. Gene believed they could yield tremendous knowledge about the role of impact in shaping not only the moon, but the Earth as well. The moon is this slate that nobody's been erasing. The record that we're seeing of bombardment, all of those craters that we see on the moon are a record of the, of the flux, of the hail of bullets coming by that's hitting both the Earth and the moon. If we want to see what a very fresh, big impact crater looks like when it's first formed, we look at the moon. That guy up there. The people who ran the space program didn't look at the moon that way. They were pitted in a furious race. What mattered to them was getting there, not what could be learned once we arrived. There's no question that NASA managers, NASA engineers, and indeed the astronauts themselves, were not particularly interested in doing science in space. Uh, that was not their mission. They had signed up to, to uh, beat the Russians to the moon. And the farthest thing from anybody's mind was actually doing some science and collecting some samples. But nevertheless, even though he was considered uh, probably a weirdo by, by some in the engineering community, Gene did not give up in trying to push this idea uh, that doing geology on the moon was important. But geology on the moon was a hard sell. Few scientists thought Gene was right about the effect of impact on the Earth, much less the moon. Many believed lunar craters, too, were old volcanoes. Before Gene got to ride a rocket, he took a fateful trip in a more modest vehicle. The shoemakers were on vacation in southern Germany. 
Gene was eager to come here to visit the Reese Basin, a 15-mile wide depression that was universally believed to be an ancient volcano. Gene and Carolyn went strolling through the medieval town of Nerdlingen in the heart of the crater. And there, Gene came upon the largest geologic sample he'd ever found. St. George's Church, 500 years old, was built of local stone. Just looking at the rock made me stop and say, whoa, wait a minute, what's this? I think I know what this is because I've seen something like that before. The walls were riddled with glass formed from shocked and melted rock. Gene didn't need a microscope to know they contained cosite. He was, was thrilled beyond words, and, and I was for him. Just to go along and just admire all of, all of this evidence for impact. And, and the formation of a giant crater. And here it is in incorporated into the cathedral. And it was just, just a very strange and interesting feeling and, and saying, ah, yes, you know, we know what this is now. <laughs> Reese is nearly 20 times as big as Meteor Crater. It was the first big impact crater on the Earth, which we could prove was an impact crater. And that just changed the whole ball game. This was impact on an entirely different scale, brought on by a mile-wide boulder that drastically changed the landscape 15 million years ago. Suddenly, giant circular scars of impact were recognized all over the globe. Some were 200 miles wide. Now we really understood there were big craters made on the Earth, and of course, that meant those big craters we saw on the moon which I was also pretty sure were of impact origin. Now we had a way of saying, yes, it's happened on the Earth, the proof is here, but they're also on the moon. Gene had finally earned the credibility to convince NASA and the United States Geological Survey to establish a program aimed at doing geology on the moon. Gene was appointed to run it. Dr. Schumacher, as the man in charge of the astrogeology program, what are you telling the astronauts to look for when they start exploring the moon? small features of the moon that will be close by around the landing site. And of course, we also want them to bring back a large number of samples. Gene brought the Apollo astronauts to his favorite hole in the ground to teach them geology. This seemed to me like a natural place to train astronauts who were going to go to the moon and look at craters. In fact, the best place in the world for it. You really get a feel of what a crater's like, and every one of them wanted to get on the moon. So they wanted to have a good idea of what they were going to get into. For added realism, Gene's team blasted a replica of a lunar crater field not far from his home. There he participated in the design and testing of many of the vehicles and tools used on the moon. Gene's youthful dream was becoming a reality. His vindication as a scientist and his great